Hi, this is your host Sapil Bhartia and we are here at Open Source Summit in Vancouver. And today we have with us Christoph Dunmer, Executive Vice President of Sova Fair Linux. Uh, Christoph, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I would love to know a bit about the company. Talk a bit about, you know, what you folks do. Sova Fair Linux is a, a Montreal-based uh, company with office in France. And for almost 25 years, we do open source software engineering. Uh, and so we help uh, our customers, a lot of different kind of organization, to build a very secure and cutting edge uh, software. How old is the company? Uh, the company has uh, almost 25 years. And uh, we opened an office in Europe uh, almost 10 years ago. And we always have been very much involved in, uh, in open source. Uh, it's really uh, part of the DNA since the beginning of the company. We decided to, uh, uh, that if we, we want to work in open source, you need to contribute. So contribution is core of our business. And uh, that's why we are a member of the uh, Linux Foundation for years. A uh, member of the LF Energy for a couple of three years now, a member of the Yocta project, but we contribute to all that project. And we also have our own uh, project uh, called GNU Jammy, which actually just uh, received a, a social benefit award from the Free Software Foundation in Boston in uh, March at the Libre Planet. What are the open source community or what are the projects you folks are involved with? So we are um, involved in a couple of projects. Um, first of all, the projects that are linked to, uh, I mean, our core business, like the Yocto project, like, uh, and we contribute to a lot of projects linked to the embedded part, like uh, GStreamer and video, FFmpeg. Uh, we also contribute and have contribution to the Linux kernel um, and also to some bigger uh, application. And uh, one of it, which is actually one of our uh, major investment uh, the, 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 the past years as on the business perspective is the CPAS project, uh, which is a project under uh, the behalf of the LF Energy. Talk a bit about your involvement with the LF Energy uh, Foundation. We joined the um, LF Energy uh, three years ago, and actually there was uh, two motivation on that. Uh, there was like a natural one and a business one. And the, the natural reason was... Uh, uh, all the executives at Savoir Fair Linux were, you know, very much uh, concerned about the, the global change, about sustainability, and uh, it was natural for us to uh, get involved uh, in that community to give our part. And uh, also we see that uh, it's a game changer for the young uh, developer and young engineer that we uh, recruit join the company for them, and especially the one in Europe, I would say, more, probably more than uh, in North America. But uh, being able to work in uh, such a project, it's a, it, it's a key decision for them to join us. And the business decision was uh, actually at the ELC, um, embed the Linux conference in uh, Lyon in 2019, when we met uh, RTE, uh, which is the, the TSO of uh, France. Uh, which is a strategic member of the Linux Foundation Energy. And we began to work with them uh, on, on some project. And so we decided naturally to, uh, to join and to contribute because uh, we need to be part of the community to be, um, to, to be really part of it. <laughs> when we look at LF Energy, uh, they are like looking at it, solving a specific problem. Uh, what role do you feel, because we are talking about yeah. climate change, we are talking about, you know, uh, carbon footprint. First of all, for, for your company, uh, how how critical or how important is this problem for you folks? And what will you see LF Energy is playing? To yeah, that? I I think there, there are a lot of challenges um, to, 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 you know, to meet the, the goal of uh, energy transition, decarbonization. Uh, there are a lot of projects uh, covered by the LF Energy. There are a lot of different actors, you know, utilities, government, vendors, uh, tech company like, uh, like us. And I think everybody needs to fill the gap and, and to play the, uh, their part. And our part is, as an open source professional, to help um, the project in their uh, industrialization and to make sure that uh, how a project begin really open source and, and we'll get in proud and we'll uh, get a community we'll, and, and we'll, at the end, we'll work in the real life. So that's what we do. 
uh, especially in the CPAS project. Now, can we just go a bit deeper into the CPAS project? What is this project uh, all about? Yeah, this, this project, um, I will, yeah, first of all, we see that in um, the, 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 I mean, the, the substitution automation, uh, we move towards to virtualization. A bit like years ago, Telco has moved to a virtualization. Uh, because of the, the grid and the flexibility of the grid uh, that will need it, because you will bring uh, wind and solar energy, um, the grid needs flexibility. So there were these needs, and uh, there was a real wheel carried by RTE and a need of building a platform, uh, an open source platform, an open source real-time platform that will uh, allow uh, virtualization and to run uh, application for control and protection into uh, the substation. So that's the goal of CPaaS. And I will describe CPaaS like um, uh, a best of breed solution. We do not reinvent uh, the wheel. Uh, we took the best tools to build a platform that will uh, Allow the virtualization. And when we look at some of these LF energy project, you know, when you look at you know some of the big players or RT, Aliander, and all those folks, some of these projects were created internally. To, it, it, though these are not you know project created for the sake of project, they were actually solving it, and then it was released in the communities to be used. So some of these projects are already in production in, in some cases. Can you talk about some of the use cases of CPAS? But CPAS just actually passed the early um, adoption stage at the LF Energy. So that means that it's, uh, there is some production and it's, it's being used. Uh, it's being used by RTE. Uh, actually, in this, con in this conference, uh, they made a conference yesterday and they announced that they will be in production with uh, CIPA soon. Uh, we know that there are vendors like General Electric, but also others that are testing uh, the platform uh, uh, very deeply. And um, actually, the, the, the use case is, uh, is very simple. Uh, and one, one use case, which not a use case, but an asset of CPAS and uh, a wheel from uh, the utilities like RTE that's an Aliander that uh, thought about the conception of this project was also to have a multi-vendor ecosystem. So really having a reference design, a platform standard that will allow uh, different vendor to be able to uh, to to use and to propose their uh, virtual machine or application to the utilities, so it's a way for them also to maybe to change, you know, like a old bare metal black box solution to move to a virtualization where the end user will be able to run application from uh, different vendors. So this is really a major use case for uh, uh, allowing the flexibility for the end users. Uh, what do you see the scope of LF energy beyond North America, beyond Europe? Because when we look at Asia, India, Africa, you know, energy crisis is everywhere. Everybody yeah. has to play a role. Do you see the scope of this foundation beyond Europe and the and US as well? Yeah, it needs. Actually, we need it. Uh, for sure, you need pioneers. And pioneers come from Europe on that topics. But then what we see in Mont North America uh, from our Montreal based uh, at quarters, it's, it's moving faster than we expected. Uh, for sure, it was a sector that is, was very slowed, you know, uh, from the, 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 the utilities, which is usually re very regulation, um, you know, organization, which are in every state, uh, and the vendor. But now, as you said, there are new vendors coming on the market, there are new actors, and that means that's what brings LF Energy is a framework of collaboration of all that actors. And I mean, there is um, no way to, to go back. And if you, need, if you want to innovate in that part, I mean, LF Energy will be a very safe place to uh, you know, work together uh, for new actors to come and for this traditional industry to uh, see that they are not uh, alone and other of their of their brother and sister of, of, of kind of company, you know, they are also face the same challenges. So I think, you know, as we said, tr we will be stronger together. Right. One more thing is that the whole energy sector, you know, you folks have been around for hundreds of years, you know, it's going through its own digital transformation journey. And the challenge is that there, first of all, so much code to be written 
too much refactoring to be done. There are a lot of, you know, players in some of those. In, they, they Either they don't have incentive, they don't have resources, or they, so it can play a very good role because the solution is already ready-made, which has already been deployed in some of the most developed markets. So that can also accelerate and help them. Exactly. Invariably. And I think it's it's a good place also for a tech company that's, you know, develop new business. Because there will be a solution. We, what we see, there are utilities or company that uh, outsource some project, but this project needs uh, people to develop them, people to industry industrial the project, people to offer support. So there is, you know, like an ecosystem around the the, the vendors and the uh, the end user, the utilities. So they are place for uh, for new business. And to be, because at the end, what we need, it's open source project in production that's uh, speed up the decarbonization. Right. This may be off, off topic question, but I want to just throw at you and we'll see how it goes. Uh, because when we look at, uh, uh, you know, economical sustainability, we, talk, we have started talking about cutting on footprint, carbon footprint, data centers have to be more efficient. Even Linux Foundation, they have a lot of projects mm -hmm. where you know this technology uses less energy. This language consumes less commute, compute resource, which means you are creating less heat. You're consuming less electrons. So, I mean, we are talking at that level. Do you also see it, of course, right now, LF Energy's focus is very, very specific, but do you feel that it needs to be broadened? Or you see, no, we have to be very, very laser focused on solving these problems. I think there are uh, so many problems to solve that you can be a laser on one. So that's why we need more actors because you know we can do everything, uh, we can solve uh, every problem. So uh, that's why we need that the community uh, grow for uh, being able that everybody in their niche sector, you know, bring their their specification, their, their speciality uh, to to help such a, such a project. So I mean, and you're right, you know, there, there are so many um, also side effects. Sometimes, you know, you develop a, a technology and there are side effects that are unexpected. So we, need, we just need some more reform, more investments, and uh, more people to join. Christophe, thank you so much for taking time out today. Talk about, of course, the company, but also LF Energy, your involvement, the CPAT project, and the broader vision that we should have. Thanks for all those insights, and I would love to talk to you again soon. Thank you. I thank you very much.